Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Happy New Year, everybody! I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful uh, New Year celebration. I had a good time last night with my wife. We went out and got an Airbnb, hung out downtown in my wonderful uh, city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. My sister was performing uh, at one of our jazz clubs, and uh, she's incredible. Her name is Brand J, so look her up. She was crushing it. And me and my wife were out there dancing to some funk music and getting our groove on. It was fun. It was awesome. And now I'm home, New Year's Day, and I'm getting caught up on some of the older videos from last year. I like to look at Jack and Joe competitions. This is another one that I missed from Minsk. I don't know where that's located. It sounds like uh, somewhere in Europe. But this event's called April Jam 2019. I'm assuming this happened in April because that would be lame if it happened in May, right? <laughs> Being named April Jam. This is a Lindy Hop Jack and Jill finals, which means that this is an improvised competition. You have a leader and you have a follower. They're gonna get together and magic's gonna happen. But how do you judge something like this? Well, there's only a couple of things that are objective about Lindy Hop competitions when it comes to leading and following um, and Jack and Jill's, and that is the control part of Lindy Hop. That is, can I see call? Can I see response? Do they look like they're in control and they're not actually fighting each other while focusing in on their role? So I can't wait to see who's who in this Jack and Jill. I don't see any familiar faces based on this thumbnail. And uh, I just want to jump in, see what happens. And I'll tell you what my thoughts are and who I thought should have won this competition. Are you ready? And here we go. Oh man, I'm trying to figure out what language it is. I thought I, I thought I, I thought I knew, almost knew who the MC was, but it's not the person I think it is. Audience is into this. Here we go. Ooh, to a live band too. Yes. And I guess this is like a warm up, letting uh, the audience see who's who. I do not have uh, the, the superpower to be able to see through dancers to other dancers, but I am trying my best to look at everybody from this angle. And I can say right now, this is gonna be at that, what I would call the intermediate, to advance level competition, it's going to be good. All right, first couple. Yes.
Bam! Bam! Uh, uh, uh. Alright, this is couple number two. <laughs> yes, it's like, yes, we're going to make this work. I love when that happens. Couple number three. Yeah, nice sync of patience, yes. Cool. All right, a fifth couple. I love this song. Is that one part in the music everybody can hear it and it could be a thousand dancers in the room but then they all jump and like hit it at the same time. Yes, yes. All right, guys. This was a good Jack and Jill. I, I, I am always surprised at events that I am unfamiliar with how good some of the dancing can be. I think this is a real testament uh, to the power of people just falling in love with an art form putting in the hard work to just get good at it and sharing it with the world. It's also a testament of the, the, the power of the internet because most people would not be able to see many of these dancers, including myself. That is if I had never been to their community. So um, that was really exciting. I don't know any of those dancers personally, which uh, for me actually helps in my critical analysis because uh, I like to see what people actually do in that moment and not cloud my judgment by looking at uh, past ideas that they've done that's in my mind, like my subconscious, because sometimes that can cloud um, even a judge's perception of what a person is actually doing at that moment in time. Because that's really what we're judging is what they're doing right then. And so uh, just looking at this competition, you know, I, I tell everybody, I judge the same way 
uh, for most competitions. As the level increases, uh, then I have to augment some of the things that I am being critical about. And like I said before I started this video, um, the number one thing I look for is that objective part of swing dancing. And in this case, um, at this particular level, I'm going to have to focus more on the control aspect of what they're doing. Can it, uh, can both dancers uh, understand the technique and not override each other in that process? Um, when I'm looking at dancers, I, clearly I want to see the lead initiate something, which is a very small part in this whole process. It's just starting something. And then I want to see the follower be able to take that idea and continue until something changes. And so a lot of times at this particular level, dancers have a hard time really being patient and focusing on their role, and particularly leaders, right? I know because I remember when I was at this level, it's all about different moves in your mind. You're excited about being able to execute them. And sometimes we forget that we're actually a part of another person's body. We're just two parts of one body now sharing energy at different points. So you have to learn how to play your position. So when I looked at this competition, there were a couple of couples that were really solid on the control. Really solid. I would say maybe four couples. Four out of the five, or I would say three. Three out of the five are really solid. And so with those three couples, automatically it puts them in the category of top three. Because at minimum, you'll get third place in my book if you can just do the control part well. You don't necessarily have to have any fancy moves. You don't have to have any cool timing. Just be able to show the technique, call and response, both working as one body, collectively being patient with each other and doing it the way that makes you uniquely you can get you third place in my book. And so when I look at this competition, there were a couple of couples that were stronger um, with the control part than others, but they also had some benefits like good timing and, and good energy and, and uh, some creative moves that were not necessarily 100% original, but they were done before by other dancers, but they, they were able to nail it. And so if I were to pick the top three, my third place would go to uh, the couple that had the, uh, she had like a flower dress, it was like pink flowers on it with white and green, and he had red pants. Um, I really, really loved their dancing. That's such a, a like a subjective word, right? To love someone's dancing has to have some kind of moral absolute, right? What kind of thing am I judging it on? Well, again, at bare minimum, I have to look at the control aspect of Lindy Hop and value that extremely high, which is something that they did. I did not see the leader one time rush through the movements or initiate something and not give the follower enough time to actually do it. That is huge, huge. Less is more as a leader. And so in my book, they were actually the best out of all of the couples for me when it came to the control part because the leader was extremely patient. Now, I'm not going to say I liked all of the shapes that, that they were choosing to lead and follow. I'm not even going to say I like the shapes of uh, the positioning of their body and how they dance, that's a bunch of subjective things. But I can look at how they were moving throughout those shapes with an objective eye. And so I, I can just honestly say they were the sharpest couples when it came to manipulating the technique and moving uh, in harmony with their partner without fighting them. And that's huge for me as a judge. So whoever they are, they're amazing. And I hope they keep dancing hard and uh, sharing their love of the dance with other people because in my book, they would have third place. And so let's just move right on up. Number two for me uh, would have to be, it was the couple, they had really, really, really good um, energy. Yes. Second place for me was the couple uh, he had uh let's see it was like a grayish jacket and i believe she was in a gold gold dress yeah that's what it was yes yeah, he's in a gray jacket black pants and his partner is in gold i think it's gold let me double check i can't get it wrong because people will be like what that wasn't my partner brah yes yeah, she's wearing like this gold dress 
and he's wearing gray. Now, the reason I moved them up to uh, second place is because uh, I liked their control, but they actually had a little bit more personality. That's a very subjective thing, but it they made me want to watch more because of the energy level. You can go out there and do the control part of a competition and get third place, and your face could be frowning the whole time. And I would still be fair as a judge and be like, hey, maybe that's their style. Maybe they're just straight up haters and they like to mean mug. Like the whole time. I don't care. I'm going to look at the dancing. But at some point, I want to be entertained and I want to be able to feel the emotions coming off of the dancers to make me want to give them an emotional response. The music is doing that for the dancers, but the dancers are also doing that for the audience. And so the couple that got me excited is, again, she had all gold on. He had a gray jacket, black pants. They had an energy behind their control that made me value it a little bit more than that, the people I put in third place. I also liked a little bit of their, their set, like their creativity. Um, they, they had some like syncopations and things that weren't 100% difficult for me to do. Um, but I also liked that they weren't just doing... You know, the same thing over and over. They went from Charleston to Lindy Hop. Charleston to Lindy Hop. They did some two-handed swing out things. And they weren't afraid to do a couple more swing outs than usual. Usually people are like, why Why did I win that competition? How come is, you know, another person won and I, you know, didn't win? We can do the same kind of things. Well, it usually has to do with the leader doing too much. Uh, or making the follower do all this convoluted things. All these shapes that the follower, you know can do, but by the time they finish them, they're so dizzy and like uh, discombobulated that it doesn't look enjoyable. And they didn't do that. They chose to stick on the swing outs more. I got to see their personality a little bit more. I could see that they could do Charleston in different shapes comfortably, but ultimately it was the, the, re the restraint of the leader to not just be busy doing things, right? Um, the couple that almost got second place for me, and they would have had second place if they would have nailed some of those moves, right? Because ultimately for me, Lindy Hop is a balance of craftsmanship and artistry. For the original generation, it was artistry because they didn't have any reference points other than like, you know, the just ragtime music. They were the original creators of this dance. And so like the musicians at the time, they were always adding their unique fingerprint to a specific sound, a specific genre, swing music, right? And swing dancing. So it was a little bit more artistic freedom because people were trying to figure out what the thing is. But now we're in the future. So we're debutized to maintain and take care of an art form that's less than maybe 150 years old, right? That's, that's nothing when you think about the long term uh, for an art form. So craftsmanship is extremely important for us in the future looking back. We got to make sure that we preserve those moves. And the couple that I thought should have gotten first place, they were so close in my mind. The only reason is because they were unable to do the control part better, right? For me, they had the artistry part more than any other couple, but the control part wasn't there. And so when you lose that and the artistry's up... I have to pull them back a little bit. I gotta, I gotta go lower on my ranking because we can't get the, the cart ahead of the horse. We've gotta make sure the order is there. We've gotta do call and response first, do it well, and then add creativity on top of that. And then it's like game over, right? So that couple, she had a red shirt on and gray, gray pants, uh, beautiful. I believe it looked like it was dreadlocks. I wish I could do dreadlocks like that. Um, and he had like a gray, a vest and like a maroon shirt for me they were the best they had some of the most like audacious movement they were trying different things she was doing the best she could to recoup from some things that just simply weren't working but because the control was lacking i could not put them in my top three and it hurts to do that because they were amazing that's the kind of fire i look for and risk taking in a competition so hopefully they don't give up uh, and, and be too discouraged from things that just simply don't work because that can that can just take you out of the game or it can make you a better dancer. So that's my rant on that. So let me tell you who my first place couple is. And this reluctantly, um, 
I have to say this because the couple that I was just talking about would have got first if they nailed their stuff. The couple that I have to put in first now is the couple, she had a maroon shirt on, dark brown hair, it looks like it's navy blue pants, and he had, it looks like a black suit with a pink tie. Uh, they had the balance. They had everything everybody else was doing. They had the control. Once you have that, how, how you judge them? Because everybody will look the same if everybody's just being nice and safe. Well, they had some timing that was right. Not just dancing and swing time, but they were able to show me as a listener when the music was changing in a very uh, dramatic way. And that's really important because swing dancing is predictable, right? And if people don't know swing music, I want to be able to appreciate the music even more when I watch a dancer um, elevate the music because of the their dancing, right? And sometimes that just has to do with the structure of how they're moving, when they're stopping, when they're deciding to do something different. And they did that well. They timed it well. But they also had a little bit of creativity and personality and style. I will say the only couples that did something that I thought was completely different and they tried different things, uh, some things I haven't seen quite done that way, uh, was the ones that that I mentioned before. They couldn't nail it 100%. And if they had that control, they would have been first. But what I'm left with is this couple because of that, right? So the couple in the blue suit and she had the maroon on, they get first because they are able to have that balance even though they didn't have as much creativity as the couple that I mentioned before. So that's my opinion, guys. Like I said, we all have it. We all have an opinion. If you're a dancer, if you're an audience member, uh, and even if you're a judge like me. Now, I like to bring a lot of context to it because obviously judging requires wisdom plus knowledge. You know, we all had our peaks at certain times where we influenced the dance and it doesn't mean every judge can do what you do, but it doesn't mean that they're not valuable just because they can't necessarily physically do what you do. But because they've been around and they've seen ideas before you've been here, they know what's original, what really isn't original. Uh, what looks disciplined and what really isn't disciplined and so you need that constructive feedback and for me I I'm one of the few judges who like to put how I judge and the Subjectivity behind that and even the objectivity in many cases out there so that you can have a firm reference point to be encouraged as you go through your learning curve in competitions particularly those competitions that are not choreographed, like heavily choreographed, because that stuff's easy, right? That, has, that isn't actually what we do when we go social dance. We, we work with our partner, there's a little bit of structure, and there's a lot of vulnerability. So um, I hope you guys are encouraged by this one. Big shout out to every dancer who put themselves out there for this competition at April Jam 2019. And hopefully they do this event again, because April's gonna be here like in a couple of months. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be in that part of the world. But if you are, I would encourage you to check it out. You need to get off of your rear end. Go to an event. If you're just starting a Lindy Hop, I know it's intimidating. You may not know a lot of people, but everybody had that starting point. But you have to go and take a class because that's where it all starts. So I encourage you to find some of these dancers. If they are teachers, ask them some questions. Take some classes. That's your beginning process to help you go through that journey but i will encourage you once you've taken class that's the beginning the hard work is getting out there and social dancing so you've got to be able to process the information that you're getting now if you want to have a more like streamlined approach so that you can take a lot of classes from a lot of different people and still be able to translate in simple language what everybody is saying different ways i encourage you to take out some check out some of the classes that i have below you know we've been able to basically strip away all the complexity of Lindy Hop so that you know what's objective and what's subjective. And it really is lopsided. There's a small part that's objective and there's a whole lot of subjectivity that in many cases a lot of people don't make clear. And so we've made that clear for you. So if you want to check that out, I would encourage you to do that. Um, it will help you accelerate your learning curve. So with that said, who do you think should have won this competition? Love to hear your thoughts on that in the comment section. Uh, let me know. If I don't see you in class in one of our, uh, some of our classes that we have online, hopefully I can see your comments in the next reaction video. 